Creating a beautiful and large game world can be a very challenging and time-consuming task. Fortunately, Unity comes with a great feature called Tile Map. It helps us easily create and modify game levels. In this video, I will teach you how you can use it effectively for your next game. I divided this tutorial into three sections. In the first one, we are gonna create a background. The second part will cover designing the actual level with the tile map. And in the last one, I will show you how to use the tile map collider. For the purpose of this video, we are gonna use a very cool asset called Crystal World Platformer. It's available for free on the asset store and contains everything we need. Let's get started. First, we have to open the asset store and search for the Crystal World. Now let's select Crystal World Platformer and just download it. We are gonna use three sprites provided with this asset and put them on top of each other to add more depth to our level. Before we start, we need to update the background sprites. Let's select all three of them and change the pixel per unit to 16. We do that because this asset uses 16 pixels grid. Whenever we work with pixel art, we also need to change the filter mode to point to avoid blur edges when scaling. I will now create an empty game object and rename it to background. Let's also reset its position. Next, we need our first layer. Let's right click, create empty and rename it to layer one. Now, right click again to the object, sprite and drag the background one image to the sprite component. I want our level to be wider than just one sprite. So I will duplicate the one that we just created and move it to the right. As I mentioned before, our background will have three layers. So let's quickly duplicate the first one, rename it, and update sprites. And repeat this again with the third image this time. As you can see, the third image did not appear. And the reason for that is because all of the sprites have the same Z position and the third layer is just hidden behind. We can easily fix that by changing the Z position of each layer. So let's quickly do that. I will use value 10 for the first layer, nine for the second and eight for the third layer. Sprites have a property called sorting layer which is also used to control drawing order. But for the simplicity of this video, I will just use the Z position from the transform component. One more thing I want to do is to change the Y position of each layer. So the whole background is higher and looks more natural. Let's change the Y value of the first layer to five. Then set minus one for the second layer and minus four for the third. And that would be it for the background. Now we can move to the tile map part. First, we have to prepare sprites. Let's select the main level build one file. And now let's change the pixel per unit to 16. Then change the sprite mode to multiple. That is because this file contains multiple sprites. Then filter mode to point and hit apply. Next, we need to slice this one image file into multiple sprites. This is pretty simple. Let's open the sprite editor, select slice on the top, and because we know this tile set uses 16 by 16 pixels grid, we just change the type to the grid by cell size and the values of X and Y to 16. And we hit the slice button. 
We can now check if everything has been sliced correctly. And hit apply to save the changes. If we now expand the file, we can see that Unity created a lot of singular sprites out of it. Finally, we can add a tile map to our scene. Let's right click, 2D object, and select tile map. Unity automatically created a grid object and a tile map inside of it. Grid is like a container for tile maps. It lets us control some settings like cell size or cell gap, but in most cases we will leave it with default values. If we want to have multiple sprite layers, then we just need to add more tile map objects to the grid. Let's look at the tile map now. It has a tile map script to control settings like color or orientation and a tile map renderer, which for example let us change the material. But we don't need to change anything here. Instead, let's open the tile palette window. If you don't have it visible, then just go to the window, 2D, and select the tile palette. Now we need to create a new palette. You can think of it as a collection of tile sprites that can be used to paint on a tile map. Let's click on create new palette. I will name it a word palette. And then save into a new folder called tile map. To add sprites to the palette, we simply need to drag them into the palette window and select the folder for the Unity to save assets. Once that is done, we should see our sprites in the palette. I will now quickly go through available tools and show you how to use them. The most often used one is the brush. We simply select sprites from the palette by holding left mouse button and then paint on the tile map with the same button. Then we have the erase tool. It's useful if we made a mistake or we simply want to remove some tiles. The next one is a selection tool. With that we can select part of the tile map and then use move tool to change the position of that selection. Next on the list is the box tool. We use it to paint a bigger area of a rectangular shape with the same sprite. We also have a pick tool. With this one, we can select the sprite type from the scene view instead of the tile palette. And last on the list is the bucket tool. It simply replaces all the connected tiles of the same type with the new one. I will now quickly clean the tile map and we can start to design the game level. For the platformer games, I like to start with a general shape of the level using just the ground sprite and then add the edge sprites to that shape. I will start from the left side and try to paint the whole level. Alright, I think this looks good. Now it's time to add some details. Let's select some ground tiles and put them on the edge of our shape. And again I will start from the left side. We have to use sprites that will match the shape, but we can always erase something or change it if we decide that it doesn't look good. Just remember to use sprites that connect together nicely.
I believe it looks very nice now, but we can still make it better. In the next step, we're gonna add some platforms. But before that, let's select our tile map and change the Z position to 6. Now, let's add another tile map to the grid and let's call it platforms. Let's also change the Z position to 5. We use the same tile palette, so let's quickly add some platforms. I want to add one more tile map. This one will be used for some environment extras like trees or flowers. So let's go to the hierarchy right click to the object and tile map rename it to extras and set the z position to 4 and now let's draw some trees and other cool things to make this level look even better That should be enough, I think. These small extras like flowers, trees and icicles make the game look so much more interesting and attractive for the player. So remember about them when you design your level. There's one more thing I want to add. In this asset we can find some rock sprites, so let's use them and add between the background and the actual level grid. This will add even more depth to the level. Let's right click in the hierarchy, create empty, rename it, and set the Z position to 7. Now let's add another empty object. This will be a container as well. Next we need the sprite object. And let's drag the rocks graphic into it. This sprite seems to be very small. That is because we haven't yet changed pixels per unit for this file. So let's select it and set the pixels per unit to 16 and the filter mode to point. And now it looks as intended. I will duplicate this object and update the Y position so these two sprites cover the entire level on the height. I will also move it slightly to the right. Let's now duplicate the whole rock one object and position it on the right side of the level. The last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is how to add colliders to the tile map. Unity has a special type of collider which makes this task very simple. If you plan to have any interactions with the terrain in your game, then you will definitely need that. Let's select our tile map object. Click on add component and search for the tile map collider 2D. That would be enough in most cases, but as you can see, the top terrain tiles have a different height and because I plan to use this level for the platformer game, I want the ground to be flat so the player movement is smooth. There is easy way to fix that, we just need to edit colliders for these ground top tiles. Let's select the main level build one file, open the sprite editor and from the top menu, let's select custom physics shape. Now, zoom in to the tile we want to edit. Hold the left mouse button and create a rectangle. That is our custom collider shape. I want this to be just a flat line, so I will move the left corners of this shape to the bottom left corner of the tile and the right corners to the bottom right corner of the tile. And I will edit the rest of the ground top tiles the same way. Wow. 
Once we are done, we just hit apply. Let's now select the tile map. As you can see, nothing has changed so far. In order to rebuild colliders, we just need to reset the tile map collider component. And now the ground colliders are exactly as we need them. I will quickly add collider to the platform tile map as well. But as you can see, this time we don't need to edit anything because it already looks good. That would be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. If you want to see more tutorials, please subscribe this channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.